Well, on a more serious note this midday, there are tons and tons of forecast online and from other stations. So we know you as a viewer are concerned, you're anxious, and you want to keep your loved ones safe. We do too. So in full transparency, we want to explain the process to you of creating our forecast and why our meteorologists are experts. So next to me are News 19 Chief Meteorologist Jim Gandy, who is also known as South Carolina's weatherman and hurricane expert. And Jim, you have more than 40 years of experience and you've been recognized by the American Meteorological Society, among others. And we're also joined by this familiar face. Many of you will know News 19 this morning, meteorologist Efren Afonte. And you spent time as a researcher sending mobilized radar into tornadic and tropical storms. And you've also done extensive analysis of hurricanes, tornadoes, and lighting detection. So, Jim, you first, please take a few minutes to tell us a little bit about your meteorological background. Well, it's pretty extensive. Yeah. But uh, let me just uh, really say something about the forecast. The forecasts that we put together are based on the facts, they're based on our experience, our knowledge, and uh, a history of, of what hurricanes do. Uh, it takes an awful lot to make these forecasts. The National Hurricane Center, you know, they have a very tough job. Right now they're following four different storms yeah. and it just takes a great deal. But what we do is we take all of the computer models, mm -hmm. we evaluate them, we see which one is performing the best, and then we kind of focus in on that. Uh, there are some out there that believe and I've had this conversation with, uh, with others, okay, well, the European model is the superior model. Mm -hmm. Well, right now there is no superior model, but there are models that do better than others. In this particular case, yeah. the European model has not performed well. So why would you continue to use a model that's not performing well? And it's pretty clear that this is a storm that's going to go into North Carolina, not South Carolina. That doesn't mean that we aren't going to see impacts. We are. But they are not the impacts that the European model has been saying we were going to experience here in South Carolina. So we've been focused on that. Um, and we've been saying for some time it's heading for North Carolina. But once it gets there, there's a lot of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Well, yesterday, that uncer uncertainty began to unfold in a way that now we are more confident in yeah. the forecast. We, we have a pretty good idea. And in fact, in the past 36 hours, there have only been minor changes in the forecast. So we're pretty confident about what's going to be happening here. We never thought that wind was going to be the major issue. Mm -hmm. We have always thought that rain was going to be the more significant issue in this area. It's still the most, uh, uh, the greatest concern that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to continue to focus on that because by the time the storm gets here to the Columbia area, yeah. it's likely to be a depression. Mm. Okay. So wind is not the issue, but rain is because even though it's a weakened system, it's dumping an awful lot of rain, it's moving very slowly, mm -hmm. and that rain is going to pile up. Now, the heaviest rain is going to be in the eastern part of the Midlands, lesser amounts as you go, but we're still going to be seeing significant rainfall mm -hmm. even into the upstate of South Carolina, yeah. which means that all of our rivers are going to have a flood threat. Yeah. And so that's something that we, of course, will be watching here. And, yeah. and Efren, I want to bring you in on this conversation because you were actually on the front lines of these storms and scientifically, tell us about that process. Oh, you know, while I was at the University of Oklahoma, uh, the, the mobile radars that I operate along with a very extensive team from the University of Oklahoma, the mobile radars that we use were specifically designed to record, sample, and, and develop system ways of tornadoes, of severe weather, of hurricanes. And the biggest thing that we would do is go out in the field and record and sample by the radars of what we see on television of these tornadic storms, of these tropical storms. We would gather all the information similar to the radars that we show on TV and we bring that back to the university. And amongst many researchers, not just our developing community, mm -hmm. but all throughout, we would actually take all of these samples and we would record this and then we would do computer modeling to indicate. Now, I've been on an extensive tornado research project back in 2009 and 10 called Vortex 2. 
It was an $11 million, 200 personnel research group that we took these mobile radars to look at tornadoes. These research radars are right now in position in Wilmington, North Carolina, sampling what Hurricane Force is going to do. And the biggest thing that we do with these research vehicles is not only record the information, but when we get back to university, all the researchers start to compile this data and start to create computer models to figure out what would happen in the future. But the thing is that all of these models and everything that we use on the radars, we've never been able to sample one that comes all the way out from the coast of Africa, mm -hmm. right through the entire Atlantic coastline, yeah. and now making landfall in Carolina. So the biggest thing that we've been understanding is what may happen, but the the research and science behind it simply comes down to one thing the best educated guess by experience mm -hmm. by knowledge and most importantly by the research and the research community that we work with to get this information together and let me just add that oh the person not here is daniel bonds yeah uh, Daniel has extensive research mm -hmm. in uh, uh, severe weather as it affects the community. Yeah. Um, how to message. And right now, he's back in the Weather Center. Yeah. Working, working on our graphics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> he's still back there working on So shout on out. It. So we've got a, a breadth of experience here that is rare mm -hmm. at a TV station. And I did want to say we did take a, a few minutes because it is important for us to tell you that when you guys create these forecasts, these forecasts are based on science and years and years of experience. And on a personal note, Jim, I've got to say, you know, you were the meteorologist that we watched back in 1991 when Hurricane Hugo hit. You know, I was just a young boy, but I remember sitting in front of our TV screen and my parents having you on and you were the reason that we kept calm. So again, thank you both for your service. Thank Daniel for your service and thank you for sharing some of your background with our viewers at home because it's important to see how these forecast models come together. It, we take it seriously and we lose a lot of sleep over Indeed. it. Indeed. Yep. Hard work. Thank you so much.